When working in 3D, we want to add a camera manually. It's always good practice. So we go to Layer, New, Camera. We'll leave it at the default, call it Camera 1. This preset is 28 millimeter, which is a wide angle lens, just like a real uh, 35 millimeter camera. Let's just leave it at that. I generally don't touch anything else here. Uh, sometimes I want to enable depth of field, but you can always do that later. That allows you to uh, have some things in focus and some things not in focus. Uh, however, it does slow down renders a lot, and I tend not to use it very often. Let's hit OK. We now have a camera. You might get a warning that says that cameras do not affect uh, 2D layers. If you get that kind of a warning, just ignore it. Just hit OK and click out of it. Let's add a shape layer. And maybe that one would be very nice. Right now it's a 2D layer. And uh, let's make it a 3D layer. To do that, we click on this cube here. allows this layer to be manipulated in three dimensions. It doesn't actually give any depth to this layer. It will still be a flat plane. Let's see what this looks like. We hit the cube and nothing seems to happen. Well, that's because we haven't changed the layer relative to the camera. In order to see what our scene looks like and to get an idea of what 3D looks like, it helps to use a different view other than just the camera. I like to work in multiple views, so for view layout I select two views horizontal. This one that's selected because of the corners is the active camera. This one over here is a view that well, it could be uh, just about anything. Right now it's a top view and that shows us that our shape layer is on edge because we're looking at it from the top. That's not the best view to be looking at right now. It doesn't tell us much, so let's just switch views to, let's say, uh, custom view one. That gives us a better idea. That's more of what we expect. If we select the camera, we see the camera's field of view here. And we see it looking directly at the shape, which is reflected in the camera view over here. No big surprise, no big deal. The shape layer, let's just hit uh, P, show the position properties. It now has three different axes of motion or positioning. Before we just had two. See, let's make it 2D again. By the way, when you have a 3D layer and you animate it, and then you make it 2D, any animation you did in the third dimension is lost. You don't get it back. So if you want to do what I'm doing now, do it before you do animation in the third dimension. Just click that, and you see the layer disappears in the 3D view, but it's still there. But it's a 2D layer now. As usual, we're used to working with those. And you have two X and Y uh, axes for transformation. Let's hit the cube, and we have three. We also have three for anchor point, three for position, as we mentioned, three for scale, and rotation is kind of special in that it has two ways to rotate. Orientation is basically just mm, tilting your, your layer. It's difficult to describe, but it, it can't go more than one revolution. If you want to rotate your object, or your layer, more than one revolution, you have to use one of these, rotation, not orientation. Orientation is, say, if you wanted to rotate it a little bit like that, just a bit, and then you wanted to do a lot of rotations in another axis, uh, then you would, let's just animate that, set this to zero, and zero, and there you go. This is just a very small number relative to that. It goes from 0 to 360, and that's it. If you want to do more revolutions, you use those. Anyway, and opacity, of course, is just the same at one axis. doesn't really have axes. So position, you can move stuff around using 
the timeline as you've done before, across, up and down, but you can also now move it forward and back. This is a godsend to a lot of you on, this would have been a godsend to a lot of you on previous projects. So you can move layers, like it can be a solid, it can be text, whatever, but you can also move the camera as well. We'll just move the camera around a little bit. Now right now, you'll get this weird kind of flip or you'll get this weird kind of angling thing if you decide to move the position of the camera. That's because currently the camera is oriented towards its well, uh, it's oriented towards its point of interest. The point of interest is what the camera looks at. Looks at. It's kind of like an anchor point, but not really. It's really what it looks at. So if you move this point of interest around, you can make the camera look at different things. This can be useful or not. As you saw, if we tried to move the camera around, hit P, and uh, by the way, A is the shortcut for point of interest. It's like anchor point, so it gets A. You hit P for position. If you were to try to move stuff or move your camera here, this is what you get. However, if you try to move it by grabbing one of the axes, like there, X, the anchor point moves with it. And this is more what you expect to happen when you move across something. Same thing for Y. So to summarize, if you like the idea of a point of interest, you can keep it, but you have to animate it in, you have to animate your camera in the comp window. If you try to animate it down here, you'll just end up getting this kind of rotational thing. That's your choice. If you like animating down here in the timeline and you don't want this kind of rotational thing happening because of the point of interest, you can disable the point of interest. Click on the camera, layer, transform, auto orient. And you could, right now it's selected point of interest, you could align it along a path or orient it along a path, say if you're doing a uh, roller coaster animation, or you could switch it off. We'll just switch it off right now. This way now, when you animate using the timeline, this is what you get. Okay? We can also do uh, text as well. Text is a 3D thing as well. You hit T, you Enter something. Boom. Right now it's just a normal 2D layer. You don't see it. But if you make it 3D, then it shows up in here. And there's the camera. Let's move the camera down to see it. There we go. Very nice. Now, one little trick when you've got a, you see this all the time with kinetic type and so on. If you want to change the background from uh, black to white, you can zoom into the text and make that happen. To do that, let's just start with our camera positioned here. And over two seconds, say let's do that, I will hold down uh, the shift key, drag the camera in closer and closer and closer. Oh and just gently nudge it a bit move it in uh, some more, there we go now we filled the frame with white and a new animation can start with black text or something on white we've just changed the scene hit N, change the work area do a little quick RAM preview and now we've got a new animation in here we could do it uh, one way or the other. You can either push in or you can push out to reveal. Very useful.